Greetings and salutations, all you stunning individuals. It's another epi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties to recap a little bit of... We're hitting the award show era. There's a lot of different esports and video game game awards, streamer awards. And this year we got the inaugural League Awards hosted by Cadrill and Shocks. And obviously, initial impressions. I feel like this ran a little smoother than some LEC productions and they had a legit director they were cutting to different cameras had different graphics boards interviews coming in music was kind of an issue at times but production quality for just creators within the scene putting this together like big shout out to everyone involved for the inaugural the first time around league awards definitely 10 out of 10 for me yes there were a couple of issues couple of hiccups type of thing but as you know I think, you know, being in the media profession more than other people, you can definitely say that these issues, these little hiccups, they'll happen regardless. It doesn't matter if it's show one or show 1000, you're going to have these little hiccups and it's how you handle it, the presentation, everything else was there and up to a spectacular standard for us. Really think that uh, this was a wonderful little uh, end of the year treat for everybody in the league community. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cadrill and Shock. Listen, we've had way more egregious issues on Riot broadcasts, so uh, I credit to them. But this was, you know, black and tie, formal affair. You had the G2 members coming in. You heard Romain say he had to, they left scrims and had to get the G2 members out of the house. It's hard to get these gamers out to actually uh, going and doing anything. But there were lots of community-driven awards here. The bigger actual... Uh, you know, industry and esports awards. They had a panel. I don't know who consisted the panel, but 70% of the votes were from the panel, 30% from the community. They got a million community votes in for this, by the way. This was only announced like a month or two, I feel like. Uh, but you, hey, you want that extra reminder, Riot, that you need to find a way for Los Ratones to bring in the Cadrill viewership numbers that come oh. through? Big part of that. Yes, there is some, I'll say just basic type of level of fans coming on through because they know it's about league. They're going to see these type of award shows. Maybe they're from a more traditional sports background where you do have these end of year award shows and they were waiting for one with League of Legends. You got it now. These are big numbers for the very first ever. And listen, it was partnered or collaborated with Twitch. They had some big wigs from Twitch at this event. So kudos to them for being able to get uh, these kind of sponsors. The big awards that came out, uh, let's see, Rookie of the Year. You had guys like Milky Way, Lucid, Jackies, but it was the LCS's own Masu picking this much-deserved award up. I think after seeing his performance at Worlds, this one was obvious who you were going to pick. And this is such a wonderful story because, again, you see the full length of this journey, the growth, the path that he had to go through and how treacherous it was at times for Masu going from the MSI performance where he individually struggled and and mentioned it in his interview saying, look, I'm getting blasted. I need to find a way to take a positive out of this lessons to improve, to be better the next time around the next opportunity. And we knew that next opportunity, it's most likely coming at this world championship. FlyQuest was a team that everything should be geared towards that they did manage to make it. And he was a vital part of what went right. Yes, we're not mistaking, of course, the identity of that FlyQuest team with Whippo and Inspired, but the role and the responsibility and respect that they paid over to Masu to trust that he could be the damage dealer when the time came into it in, in these compositions, in these clutch moments against these big teams, he was up to the task. And his buddy inspired also getting a shout out here. They had a player of the year for each of the major regions and it was inspired taking home that trophy uh, for the LCS. I think he was pretty much consensus the best juggler in both splits in North America. Best jungler in both splits and an instant reminder to a lot of people on what they were missing, not having him out there on the rip, not in a starting spot. And this what guy wasn't was on a team. Up. It's mind blowing. It absolutely is insanity to feel that he, to know that he wasn't on one of these teams and to see the impact, the game changing performances that he can have. And generally, also, not just about what he does on the rift, but off the rift, how he motivates the team and sets it up for success. And that is the goal that we're all striving towards. That is something you like to see, you love to see, especially in the LCS. To have a player like Inspired is a great boon. Uh, the LEC player, you know, caps 
takes home the hardware. Another trophy for him. Always an obvious pick. But I would have liked to see his buddy Broken Blade win, who was also nominated. If you look at the full year of work for G2, BB might have been their best and most consistent player. And it's a little unfortunate because Caps is probably bringing in this one with, again, a little bit of that name recognition as part of what Definitely. you did. And, you know, certainly looking as well at the LEC and not having as strong a year as everybody would have liked. Of course, the familiar and the one that was consistent in his own individual performance, you could look at Caps and throw him into that one. But I do like that angle of Broken Blade. I feel like that is the more interesting and more deserving recipient of this reward for what he was able to do, how he was able to evolve and continue to grow his own skill set and what he could provide for this G2 roster. It's unfortunate that he's not the one stepping away with that recognition. And obviously, you know, we have Player of the Year awards. Uh, like Korea does it very often, even by each role, who's the standout. And it's you're looking at the whole body of work, not necessarily just a single tournament, which is why LCK Player of the Year, the honors went to Chovy. I, I think that's another obvious one. Again, when you're looking at from the start of spring to the end of Worlds, who was the most dominant individual player? Of course, it's Chovy. It's of course it's Chovy, but the like again, the crazy thing about Chovy when you're looking through this regular season and seeing all these numbers, all these performances, it's he's performing at the highest of level game after game after game after game after game. There's no oh well it was only three games and then here's a down. It's it's just it keeps rolling and it keeps going on how important and how successful he can be for this Gen G team. Yes, this has to be the one. And I think uh, at this point, he might start declining these type of awards, saying, I don't need this recognition. I don't need additional fuel for people to say, look at all what I've got for regular season and what I've got when it really matters in these international. I, I Again, shout out to Cadrill and the crew for... They got, even if they're short little kind of PR messages, they got messages from all these guys who are winning the big awards. Uh, LPL was probably the most contested one for me. Case in point, there were three BLG members nominated for Player of the Year in uh, Knight, Bin, and Elk. It was Bin who ends up taking home the honors. It had to be one of those three guys because BLG was so dominant. For me, individually, I think Elk would have been my choice, and that more so goes, and maybe it's unfair, or it's just how you're evaluating these type of things personally, but for me, the where he started at the beginning of the year and where the expectations were and where he ended up and the performances that we got through the year, that's where I'm going with Elk and what he was able to do for this BLG team. I don't think anybody is going to say it's a bad choice or an unacceptable choice to throw Bin up at that number one and taking that winner spot. Even someone like Knight would be in that conversation on what he was able to do and how much of a killer he was in that mid lane for this BLG team. I think there's no question it's a BLG player. I'll accept almost any of them from how you're, you're rolling on through them. But I do want to give a quick shout out. Your boy Light! getting in the nominations on this one i feel like maybe that's a little remnant of, of you know weibo gaming with kajal or maybe it is finally getting a little bit of acknowledgement for the consistency and the level of performance that we have seen from him in the lpl i mean weibo had a few very deep surprising runs and light was the spark that helped all that get through so yeah i respect him for getting the shout out he had no chance winning against anyone <laughs> uh, on that blg lineup so uh, you might be going Where's the T1 love? All these awards. I don't hear anybody with T1. Don't worry. They still picked up uh, a whole lot of hardware. And it was the big ones on the night. We're talking team of the year goes to T1. And overall player of the year, the honor goes to Faker. I don't know the criteria for team of the year, but obviously with both of those two uh, winning, it's very much heavily emphasizing the world championship. Yes, and and that's I mean it's 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 fair to make that type of a, a, a you know equation on how you want to get to your final answer here on what you're weighing the values of these contributions of these events of these performances and going to the obviously the most important most pressure packed one of the year and weighing it so heavily, I can understand that.
and for someone like Faker to go through this journey, I think it is uh, recognizable this year that does deserve that recognition for where he has gone through, what he has struggled through, and the, and the time that he has put in to get that performance at the end of the year is a big part of why he is the unkillable demon king why he is the greatest player of all time what he was able to do this year to be at the lowest depths that he was at ever i think individually as far as his performance in his career post msi and at that msi event to where he was at the world championship turning that corner being the guy that always and i mean always it didn't matter game four game five pick your pick he's making the clutch play to save t1 and I mean, you could talk about that final series against BLG. He's got two, maybe three highlights that are right on his already incredibly stacked highlight reel of a decade plus, but right near the very top. Case in point, you had play of the year and you had both that Silas engage and some Galio plays from game five in that series. Multiple out of Faker. It ends up being that Silas game four engage uh, that takes the cake, takes the award for this one. Shout out, I would have gone with the Elk Kaisa play earlier at Worlds. If you're looking specifically at individual uh prowess in a play it's got to be the elk one but i understand the, the stakes of the match uh for the faker ones get the edge uh, elk doesn't uh, essentially get the benefit of carrying the momentum of that series of what was going on for the team in that moment it really is just down to the pure mechanics and decision making in that fight when you're looking at it with him and what was so spectacular then we go over to Faker, and then again, it's it's take your pick when you're talking about these ones. The pick was the Silas moment, the Rakan ultimate engage in game four. Again, T1 needing this win to stay alive in the series. Keep it going to that, of course, Silver Scrapes ultimate deciding game five, where we do have the Galio play. And for me, I individually go with the Galio play because I think it does, again, get a little bit of a boost from game four to game five. Now, this is the do or die big time all or nothing game. You got to make the plays, the situation in the game where he makes the play on that Galio. What's just happened? Guma gets killed. All these things. Here comes Faker, and he's going to make sure that it is T1 staying in that driver's seat. The phenomenal plays again the only type of guy that you can talk about this type of quality of play with is faker he's the only one and you know what you could probably do a top 10 list of all these type of amazing plays that he's got i mean you could have a pretty good top 10 just from this year's worlds alone what faker <laughs> was doing in that bracket stage but uh the best thing about worlds is you can always you know we get to the end and see how things play out and if you went back a month and a half before the tournament and told people that's how i think of the drx run and this year the level up from faker if you told people this is how it was going to play out they nah, nah, nah I, that's not happening I think, I think you'd need to go back just further than the series against kt because if you told them in that series against kt when t1 was losing at that point it's fine. they're gonna might... win the worlds that's fine that that might be the only chance that you could to believe it because it was so unbelievable that it was possible. And that is partly the magic of what T1 is able to do, is able to make you believe in the unbelievable for this team. The plays that Faker made, again, unbelievable type of plays. The Silas one gets that recognition. I think it really is more so about the, the excitement and the visual of what is happening in that team fight. Of course, having the Rakan ultimate, you know, getting on everything to layer it through and make sure that it is the decisive fight for T1. That's where I feel it gets the additional benefit. For, for, but for me, it's all about the clutch and the importance of that Galio fight. One more big shout out for... The crew that was involved in making this whole award show, obviously Cadrill and Shocks for organizing it. It's it's insane that this is a community or creator made event, and Riot probably sitting back there going, "Oh my god, they did this better than we could." Uh, you know, yeah. Hey, and shout outs to to Dom. Dom appeared. Yeah. Yamato shows up for this one. You got the whole crew coming on through with this one with Cadrill. Again, these are a lot of things where maybe you know it's moving into this new era as far as the media and the personalities go for League of Legends, where they can stand uh, stand up for themselves aside away from Riot Games and official type of things, yet still, of course, contribute and talk about these topics in the game. 
that's something I think that we're moving towards in this league event was a wonderful first time one for it. You got the full support from the fans. You got the support from the players. This is a double thumbs up situation. And again, you add this Los Ratones. They're playing at the Red Bull event and Cadrill's taking over the off season, man. It is a full takeover, my guys. Buckle up. It ain't going to stop. And especially knowing this year is the year where things ramp up even more with early events and starting in the season and the international event. Get ready, folks. It is going to be one hell of a ride. We got the NNO Cup Finals over the weekend, and then that very same Red Bull event gets started in like 10 days or so, I think, where we're having G2, T1, everybody showing up. So we got some little appetizers to take us through to the new year of games. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Absolutely stunning individuals. Thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.